Hey, thanks for tuning in again, guys. It's Big Philly with Poor Boys RC. And today uh, I wanted to go over this lovely gem that I found with you guys. Um, found this guy on eBay. You Tamiya addicts will recognize it right away as a Tamiya Falcon. Not the most coveted of Tamiyas. Um, a lot of guys don't seem to like these things, seem to think they're ugly, don't handle the best. And guess what? You're right. It is kind of ugly. It's really bulky. It's got these weird like shocks go through the upper control arm kind of funky setup. Um, yeah, you know, it is kind of ugly, but I love it. And, uh, you know, it kind of represents the era of, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the holy days of RC when to me it was pumping out cool looking kits like this. I think it's super, super cool. Um, this is not a re-release. I don't think they've ever actually re-released this, but um, this is an original kit and uh, it's actually in surprisingly good shape. A um, couple cool things. The previous owner kind of built these upper guards out of metal to, to protect the, uh, the top of the shock tower there and there. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, and you see they've been kind of beat up a little bit. And what else? There were a couple interesting little things. Yeah, I can see he must have built a couple for the rear shocks as well, but they broke off at some point. Um, look at the condition of that chassis. Everything inside there is gorgeous. Got a manual speed controller with the dust shield on it. It's definitely been used. Futaba servo came with a radio, an old school big, big analog stick radio. Um, the resistor, the resistor shield is kind of bashed up and beat up a little bit. Got some Tamiya decals on there. Don't have any idea how they survived with all the heat that they must have been put through. But, um, you know, all in all, this thing is in really, really nice shape. Uh, oh, yeah, check out underneath. Some scratches, definite, you know, a bit of wear and tear. But nothing major, you know. It's in really nice shape. I want to restore it. I got some decals from MCI. And I think that's all I really need. The gearbox is nice and smooth. I haven't put power to it yet, but I'll put some power to it, make sure that works. And um, and that's it. It's not going to be a runner. I think I'll do one running video with it just to just to have it, because I think for nostalgic reasons and for so many reasons, you got to make one running video. Um, and then after that, it'll just kind of go on the shelf. You know, this thing's not a great performer. It's just kind of a cool retro buggy. So um, I'm going to just start despite, you know, I'm going to take it apart, see what's missing. And the only thing we have a screw missing up here. If you can see that there's a screw missing up here in the top of the transmission. Um, yeah, the diff feels nice and buttery smooth. 540 silver can. I can tell that's, you know, that's, that's the original still little capacitor on there. Anyway, super cool piece of Tamiya history. I just want to get it apart, get it cleaned up a little bit. Um, Really, the chassis isn't going to need much. The body is going to need a bit of love. So it's, you know, it's definitely seen its fair share of abuse. Um, and the one thing I'm really not in love with on this body is the color. I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but it's really like a really kind of muddy, browny green, kind of a nasty green color. Um, so I want to go box art with it. Nice uh, black, black and uh, red with the decals. And, you know, the spoiler put the, you know, born to be wild decals across the spoiler, just like the box art would have been back in the day. So, um, some cleanup work to do on this body. It's got a couple little broken bits here and there. I'll put a bit of shoe goo uh, in behind it to, to fix it up. But again, it's not going to be a runner. There is a driver figure in there. Hopefully you can see it. Don't know if you can see him, but there is a driver in there. So I'll take him out. He's already been painted silver. Um, which is kind of cool. Looks like a space suit, but uh, the face can use a bit of paint. So I'll do a bit of paint work on the driver there as well. And um, yeah, get this, breathe a bit of new life into this old kit. And um, I think I mentioned I've got new decals from MCI. So put the new decals on there, take these ones off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this body on the outside because it's so old and fragile. I'm not going to try and and get this paint off with um, with brake cleaner or anything like that. I just, I don't trust that it'll survive the journey. <laughs> so being that it's not going to be much of a runner at all, I will take all these decals off, clean up the outside of the body. I'm going to paint the outside of the body black and then put the, the new decals on there. So 
Um, I'll even hit the inside of it black again just to eliminate all the green that's visible. And um, yeah, that'll be the plan. So should be cool. Um, hang out for a bit and uh, we'll get cracking on this guy. Cheers. So we're making some good progress on this thing and um, you know I, I didn't uh, I don't know if you guys noticed but one of the first things I did was I took the wheels off and right away the rear wheel the hub for it broke and it was it's probably been broken forever but um, I don't know how well that zooms but at any rate this is I think this kit came out in 85 so let's say conservatively let's say that this kit's been around since 1990 um you know she's 30 years old <laughs> so this plastic was brittle when it was brand new so you know this thing broke so um that kind of led me to um not want to get as involved with taking everything apart because this kit hasn't been re-released yet so I, you, you you just can't get parts for it. you might be able to find them on ebay and stuff but um this isn't going to be a runner for me it's not it's just not gonna be a runner so um I'm not really interested in taking it all apart and breaking a bunch of brittle plastic then trying to find little bits and pieces all over the internet so and paying a fortune for them. So what I might do with this, because these wheels, uh, as Tamiya used to do back in the day, you see each um, wheel has like a, a proprietary sort of hub design. And they're not all like that. Some are kind of universal, but you guys know like with your big wigs and your uh, hot shots you've got like the three spoke design and here we've got a you know four little round holes that go into the four little round holes in the back of this wheel so this hub works with this wheel and that's it so they may overlap into some other vehicles if you guys know of any vehicles that they overlap on please let me know leave it in the comments below so i can maybe search because this is going to drive me nuts and i am going to have to replace this for the time being i'm just going to shoe goo it or use some tamiya cement or something and just kind of hold it together, but I won't run the vehicle until, um, until I got this replaced. So, so yeah, so that being said, you know, I really didn't want to get into it too much deeper than I had to, um, just so that, um, you know, there were no more surprises of that nature. So, but again, it didn't really need a whole heck of a lot. The thing was in like, it's in like mint shape. So, Anyway, just going to kind of wipe this down a little bit more. I'll do a little bit more of that off camera. And um, that's that for the chassis. Again, the gearbox was like butter smooth. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. So, try to clean this place up, look presentable for you guys. Whew, there we go. Um, wheels, I'm going to get to these. What I want to do with the wheels. I'm going to leave the stock bushings in there again. It's not going to be a runner. So um, I just think that add a bit of a nostalgic value. But you can see just the outside of the wheel there. It's pretty curb rashed. So oh, do I even want to take these off? Maybe I don't even have to tie her on. Just save some time. But just take a bit of sandpaper and just sand that down a little bit. Actually, I can take a razor blade. It's hard to do this so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I also do it and don't screw it up royally. Now just take a razor blade and cut off some of that excess there. And already, that wheel looks a thousand times better. Again, I don't want to go crazy on them because they're, I mean, the tires are, you know, there's a, a bit of a flat spot in one of them back there. So, um, one of the rear tires, so, you know, they're, everything's really old. So just want to be careful with it. I'd rather preserve it and have it look good on the shelf. I know some of you guys are anti shelfers, but you know, when they're 30 plus years old, 30, 35 years old, kind of is what it is. You know, it's not going to be a runner. That's for sure. So already that wheel looks a hundred times better. And I think I'm going to color the letters on these wheels too, because that would just, they got these nice big letters there, off-roader. 
That would just look super, super cool if it was um, colored in, in my opinion. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So that's it for the wheels. I'll continue with those off camera. Um, the body, let's get into this body. Let's see what happens here. Cause I am curious. Even just the Lexan feels brittle. You guys see that okay? Do that. That's good. Try that. Yeah, I don't know if, you know, how much life we got left in this Lexan. It's pretty brittle. So there's our driver wearing a, uh, he's either wrapped in tinfoil or some sort of a spacesuit, but, uh, you know, it was the 80s, man. Anything goes. Hopefully the body doesn't start breaking apart. That would be terrible. I don't think it will. I mean, it's got a bunch of like little cracks in it here and there. Nothing crazy though. And there was some silver overspray. You guys may have noticed me using this, this scotch bright pad on the control arms on the upper A arms. There was some silver overspray that I actually got on it when I was painting another body. I was just, I guess, not paying attention. And a little shot of overspray flew out and I got it on the arms there. So, uh, but that's okay. It comes off of those scotch bright pads pretty nicely. And if you look close, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can actually see all the overspray on the outside of the body here too. So that was me. That was me being an idiot and <laughs> just not leaving enough room and uh, quickly trying to spray something. And that's what happens when you rush things. It all goes to heck. So what are you guys doing during your quarantine? Let me know. Leave some notes down below. Let me know what you're up to. Um, I live in Canada, in British Columbia, where we are pretty... Uh, we're pretty high up on the COVID-19 list of um, infected people and uh, deaths. Us in Ontario lead the country, I believe. So not the kind of thing you want to leave the country in. So uh, I've, I'm on lockdown, man. I'm, I'm in my room, my hobby room here. So thank God my partner is pretty much the coolest lady on the planet. And she doesn't mind me hanging out up here for hours on end. And, uh, you know, man, I had so many projects from from back in the day to take care of. So now I got time to take care of them. So, so body came apart pretty nice. Wing came off, you know, it's got some cracks in it. The paint, you know, where it's, where the body's been stressed, like right here, you know, the paint's starting to delaminate. So, and it, it doesn't look like the proper type of paint. It looks like, like a household, like trem clad or something, something that the guy used. Doesn't look like nice to me a pain. I may be very wrong, but that's what I think. I'm sticking to it. So um, I wanna see if I can get these decals off. I Chihuahua. Yeah, this is gonna be a bugger. How do you get old decals off? Who knows, somebody out there knows. Tell me how to do it so I don't make a mess of this thing. I think these decals are on there. Like they're really on there. They've been on there for 30 years or more. So I'm going to say, oh, hang on, look at this. Oh, I spoke too soon. Maybe, maybe not. Don't break it. Don't break it, Phil. Oh, all right. All right, here we go. Falcon's coming off okay. Look at that, Sunny Jim. Oh, yeah. There we go. The big ones seem to be coming off okay. That was pretty cool. Leaving a bit of kind of a gluey residue behind, which... I don't know if the camera picks that up. There's some residue left behind there, which I'll have to clean off. Um... Just keep plugging away. I don't want to mess up this body. 
I think before I continue to take all these decals off, I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask around some of the uh, Facebook groups what guys are doing to get off get old decals off because uh, again I just don't want to break this body. It's it's already got some some uh, war wounds. You know, we want to preserve it as best we can. So I'm going to do that before I go any farther with this, just so I don't make a mess of it. I tend to do that. I tend to break stuff, put too much effort into it, then just break it. And then I'm like, oh, damn. And then I got to go out and buy a new one. It's just not the same, you know? I want to try and preserve this thing in its elder condition. Yeah, some of these are coming off okay. Anyway, I'll play with that later. What else we need? We're going to paint this guy. And uh, yeah, we'll do that later. We've got some shocks. So the shocks, yeah, yellow CVAs. This one came off, I think, the left rear. Feels pretty good. The right rear, it's got lots of air in it. I can hear it squishing around in there. And they just need to be cleaned up. Like, they're in good shape. They're not even leaking oil. One up here, he kind of cross-threaded. You can see the lid's kind of cross-threaded and it's covered in oil on the outside, so it's been leaking forever. Doesn't feel very nice, so I'll get into that later on. Get those cleaned up. What else have we got here? We've got our rear lower control arms, which again are in beautiful shape. Interesting that he's got ball bearings in the back here, but the front tires have bushings. So I don't know if that's probably how they came because I've seen to me has come that way with you know partial ball bearing, partial bushing, cost savings, of course. I'll take that out. But yeah, get all this cleaned up. Yeah. These are actually in pretty nice shape. But man, this ABS plastic. Old boys like me that have been doing this a long time. You remember how brittle this plastic was back in the 80s. Holy cow. You look at it the wrong way and you broke it. 